Mind Gap Podcast. Welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Doug, in what precarious position would you want to be eternally resting in for a future protagonist to stumble upon in a post-nuclear apocalypse? I'd like to be on the sink with my legs up, like change my die-die. <laughs> so they walk into the house. They've got, let's set the scene. There's still ash that's kind of just like in the air. This nuclear fud's like maybe 20 years after it's just this like scorched earth. There's this orange glow. They're coming in. They've got their masks on and their flashlights. They're coming into your house and they're like, all right, this one seems to be empty. Let's scour. And so they go through and they walk in. Now, which, which sink are you in? Are you I'm in the kitchen? probably going to be, um, no, it's got to be, actually this kitchen would be hilarious. Right? Because it's like, Wait, bathroom is kind of like, sink? I don't know, man, maybe this guy shit himself and he was trying to find a way to like scoop right. the water up his butt and clean. the sink would be hilarious. You know, because so there, there's in, way more questions the, to be had about that. Like, right. So I'd know. like to think that they take the long way around. So they they enter your house and they turn right. So they go into the living room and they're like, nothing here. They go into the dining room. They take another left and they're like, all right, kitchen, what the fuck is this? And they just see a six foot two skeleton sitting. I'm sorry. On the I'm sink. sorry. Six foot three. Come on. Sorry. Six foot three skeleton. I, I have to assume that the blast... Compressed you, shrinks at me. least an inch. Yeah, just an inch. Yeah, yeah. just an inch. Everyone uh, loses an inch in the nuclear fallout. S- skeleton sitting there on their back with their legs straight up and their hand down mid. I don't know what, and they're just like, no, what that's like I got I got hands there? on either side of my hamstrings. You know where they used oh, to. Oh, so be. you're holding your legs? Yeah, I'm holding my legs up. Like change my diet. See, I like. I like the idea that your hand is reaching down. Mm-hmm. It's not grabbing anything, but it's just reaching down for, again, it poses more questions to it's, me. It's true. It'd be very you know? confounding. To yeah. Be like- or or your hand is reaching up towards what would be where the cabinets were. And they're mm-hmm. like, what was he reaching for? Yeah. Did he just In fall backwards position- into the sink because he saw a spider or something? Like, what's going on? You know, he's just like, ah, you know, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'd like to be, I'd like to be, um. I think I, I'd have to have a top loading washer for this to happen. I currently have a front loading washer, but I'd like to get inside of the washer machine mm-hmm. and just stand with my arms just straight up and <laughs> and just maybe like what what was was he doing was he going for a ride like what was this a sexual was he just thing cleaning down the stairs you know what was this yeah yeah downstairs cleaning you gotta love that you know cleaning his downstairs bonanza yeah yeah or or like you know um, I get like uh, four hundred pounds like a barbell and put 400 pounds on it. And I'm just like sitting on the bench like, man, was he benching 400 pounds? That's pretty fucking cool. You know, this guy, man, what a, what a, what a legend. He died doing what he loved. Bench <clears throat> press, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> he died doing what he loved. PRing. Yes. PRing yeah. with 400 pounds, you know, <laughs> just like absurd, you know, absurd yeah. things, you know, just, uh, or just like super mundane. Like it looks like he was doing his taxes, you know, like, <laughs> You've got to calculate somehow if you could get a uh, a visor, one right. of those green see through visors that didn't burn up in the nuclear blast, and it could still be on the skeleton. Somehow the paper the, the paper's still there, and it's just like taxes, and it's like, man, he yeah. was like way late on these, you know, right. like this is way past tax day, you know. Based on when this blast happened, yeah, he it, that's not good. Listen, yeah. I'm not an accountant. I think he's cheating. I think he's cheating on his taxes. <laughs> You know what? This blast might have been the best thing for him, right? Because <laughs> now he, he doesn't know shit. He said he's ten ninety nine. I don't. I don't know, man. This seems a little suspect. I don't think he's. Uh, I don't think he's calculating <laughs> everything that uh, he needs to for this. You know, like yeah. I, I bet he didn't save all that money. I bet he just spent it all, thinking like I don't have to worry about this till later. And now the bill comes due. The tax bill comes due. You know, tax bill comes due. Yeah, yeah. Right. Just I again mundane. There's there's stuff. so many different positions that would be just marvelous for. For people to walk in on. Yeah, just really boring things. Yeah. You know? Me just recording a podcast, you know? Just, right. just sitting in this position. Sitting right in my little with, console yeah. thing, and they're like, huh, <laughs> wow. Someone was streaming, you know? That happened, I guess. Yeah, right? Just, yeah. What do you know? He's sitting down. Wow. That's, uh, 
What a find. Another what a, streamer. <laughs> what a life this man must have led. Yeah. Wow. I wonder if he was yeah. broadcasting to the world, you know, before people, <laughs> as soon as people forget the past, which we'll get to in a minute, you know, they're like, he must have been someone really important, you know? He had his own personal radio set up in here. Right? He had yeah, multiple must, screens. He must have it, been like some sort of like general or commander, you know, <laughs> d- dictating what to do on the battlefield. I fucking love it. Yeah. I play RTS uh, games. Yeah. I like to command <laughs> and conquer. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm assuming this is from like some of that stuff from Fallout uh, that's been going around. Have you seen the thing? I've seen like someone like I saw one clip of someone being like, Have oh, my the God, show? the news going off and a guy grabs a fishing pole and jumps on the bathroom sink. Yes. and like, yeah, <laughs> well, that was the one. Yeah. So someone actually posted this in our discord. I think it was Noah and he it came with that 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 TikTok. And I, I thought I was like, well, that is that is funny. He's sitting on the sink mm-hmm. with a fishing pole and the bobber is in the toilet. Mm-hmm. And it's like walking into that. Be like, what? Why? What's going on here? What's, what's, that, uh, what's, going what's on? happening? Another one, good one would just be sitting on top of the toilet tank. It's like, was this guy double decker? Yeah, it's like, like yeah, during the, the, the nuclear the, blast, the, the top is off and there's just the right? radiated water beneath him. It's like, what? What do we Why? got going on here? Okay, yeah, this guy was what? pulling a prank and what, last uh, minute he died. What, 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 what's going on here? This guy's uh, <laughs> this guy's trying to take a shit. In the or trees. not a double decker, upper decker. Yeah, yeah upper decker. Upper he's, trying decker. To, he's doing an upper decker. Yeah. Right, right when the uh, nuclear blast happened. I don't know how I feel about that. You know. But was that is that from? If the, I remember correctly, I played show or the game? Fallout. I played Fallout Three uh, on the PC. That's the only one I've ever played. Um, right. And I think there are situations where you find skeletons and stuff, and just like oh, from okay. the blast. All right, that must be what. Okay. I, th- I think that was probably something silly where you could come across and be like, "What the fuck?" You know, uh, sort of situation. Um, the, the show was recommended very heavily to me by more than one person. And they said, even if you don't play it, if you've never, which I have not, they said, you know, it's enjoyable if you haven't. And it's even more enjoyable if you have. So, yes, that's what that's what I've heard as well. Um, yeah. I just I'm as neutral as you can come on that franchise. I played the PC game. I enjoyed it. Sure. That was the extent of it. Never played any other ones. Never had any desire to. When they said this show was coming out, I'm like, OK, like, cool. I yeah. just I'm not super into the world or anything like that. I'm just pleasantly neutral towards it. Don't hate it or anything like that. So yeah. I'm like, all right, that's cool. Whatever. Like, I don't have any problems. But I'm also not like it's not near the top of my list to watch. I'm like, me, me. Yeah. So <laughs> me, me, me. there's a couple other really good series that <clears throat> I need to start putting them on my uh on my recommendations because yeah. uh, there's some good ones out there right now. Can I, I make think, an uh, appeal the beginning to you of this year again? Oh yeah. Like for something, number one, watch Arcane. I know exactly what you're... Arcane. What's it? Watch Arcane. Yeah. So yep. there's that one. Second one is a bigger ask, and I understand this, but you're not much of an anime guy. I understand that. But My Hero Academia is now on Netflix. It's the first four Wasn't seasons. it always? No. It was usually on Crunchyroll, uh, which is the oh, anime specific okay. one. <clears throat> so like the first four seasons are on Netflix right now. And okay. I went back and started rewatching it. Uh, I really enjoy that series um, a lot. And okay. for the reason of it starts out very like bright, chipper. I liken it a lot to like Harry Potter. Like the first few books, you're like, oh, they're kids. Ah, there's some darkness, not that big of a deal. But then it slowly progresses like, you know, book four of Harry Potter. You're like, oh, shit, someone uh-huh. got murdered. Book five, you're like, oh. Okay, oh, sh- and then like six, and then this seven, you're like, oh, this is kidding. It kind of happens in this show <laughs> yeah. where you're like, oh, okay, ha, ha, it's it's anime. And you're like, whoa, whoa, okay, whoa. And then it gets like real serious, and you're like, okay, but it's still lighthearted at the same time. Um, yeah. If you were ever to like try a show, I would recommend that to you. I feel like um, it's something that you could, uh, and they're like 23-minute episodes, so they're very <clears throat> digestible. Look, I'll tell you, what has opened a lot of doors for possibilities to me is the, uh, so Beth it loves, uh, she fell in love with the Peloton workouts. And so mm. we uh, we got, you could rent a Peloton, rent to own. So we're renting a Peloton. I found out, it's not, I don't like, I don't enjoy the workouts necessarily, mm-hmm. like the, the pre-recorded, like, here we go, like uphill. 
But what I found out is that they do have an entertainment tab that you can log into Netflix, oh. uh, Disney Plus, and uh, Max. And I'm like, well, okay. And so I've gotten, I got Big Mouth season five hmm. or whatever the latest one was. I got that out of the way on the Peloton. I'm like, okay, so this could be. And every time I go, uh, our, what is the other, the first Arcane. one? Arcane. Arcane. Every time, because it's in my recently watched, because I still, yeah. you know, I, I, I started episode one that one time. So it's still there and I see it every time I scroll and I'm like, you know, I could knock this out while I'm on the bike. That could be real easy. So yeah. I actually might be able to get to these, Doug. I'm I, yeah, I, um, Arcane for sure. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt you will enjoy. Yeah. There's absolutely okay. there's zero doubt in my mind. I think Mario. But the first episode was cool. Like yeah. I, I, I admit, it just it was one of those where I just I didn't watch the second one quick enough and yeah. I lost the steam. Sure. So I need to go back and start been that there. up again. I've totally yeah. been there. Um, my Hero Academia, I think, will be a little bit of a challenge because I just don't know if you're used to anime. And this is I'm coming not. from me. I don't Very consider much not. <laughs> I don't consider myself a big anime guy. Like I, I'm. Yeah. I, it's like. I'm a casual gamer. I'm a casual anime guy. But there's sure. certain things that, like, I think if you're not used to it, you're like, what is going on with all this internal dialogue that I'm hearing? Like the rules of the world of the, the like, right? Because yeah. there's a lot of it where, you know, yeah. a lot, fights seem like they last forever because, like, each person is like talking and analyzing the fight in their head and, like, oh my gosh, if I do this, then he's going to be doing that. And for at first, it's like super distracting where you're like, dear God, like, I talk a lot in my head, but. I feel like this fight would should be over already, you know, as it's happening. Right. Um, and there's I also liked this when I saw it in Sherlock Holmes. Thank you. Right. And then like yeah. you also realize that in, in these kinds of things, like they always announce their moves as they're saying it. They're like, you know, Recipro smash. It's like they're like it's super dramatic, you know, and right. they just and they literally call it out in the show. They're like because the, the premise of My Hero Academia is. <laughs> The 80% of the world has what's called a quirk and okay. it's basically like a superpower. Some of them are really dumb. Some of them are super powerful and you follow this kid who desperately wants to be a hero, but he doesn't have a quirk and, okay. but he's got a heroic spirit and <clears throat> he is given an opportunity to become a hero. He's given the opportunity to get a quirk, which is extremely unusual. And you watch him as like, he goes to this very elite school to learn how to do it. And what I also like about this is um, the, a lot of these, honestly, I, I think it's great for like the idea of storytelling and like in a fantasy world is like people have, you look at this, you're like, that is a really dumb ability. That is so okay. fucking stupid. But you watch over time, they progress, they refine and they expand upon their abilities to so you're like, okay, mm -hmm. that's interesting interesting like you watch a character who's like he can walk through walls you're like that sounds really dumb you know it even shows him like when he's practicing he's like getting stuck because he has to focus about this hand goes through but he needs to keep his foot over here so like he has to concentrate he be he's like one of the best students in the school because he learns that he can go down and then like b below and then he pops back up behind people and he's very skilled in combat. And he beats the shit out of people because he does surprise attacks all the time. <clears throat> nice. And you just get to see the progression of these people and how they're like super effective. And you're like, that seems like, and also there's not a one quirk beats all sort of situation. Like some people right. like their matchups, you're like, Oh, this is the worst possible matchup for me because like, I'm a defensive person and I can't really attack and you're super offensive and you can just push me around or whatever. Like it's really cool right. how they come up with this sort of stuff. Anyway, I digress. Um, I, yeah. To you and to anyone who, who is interested, uh, this is now on Netflix, which I think is great. It's not, the show is not done yet. They're actually, I think they're the next season's coming out later on in May on Crunchyroll and Japanese television, but you can get the first four seasons, which is a really cool arc. Like, those seasons, like um, you get to you get through what's one of my favorite arcs, which is the overhaul arc. Really, really <clears> good. <throat> and also, this sounds really cheesy. The acts of heroism in that show, they just hit me like okay. people sacrificing themselves or like willing to be like, I'm not like, you know, they're outnumbered. They're outgunned. They're like, I'm not leaving. I'm, I'm staying on my ground because that's what heroes do. And yeah. it's just like I'm always like, he is a hero. You know, I probably because like I just don't see that much of that in my regular life where people are willing to 
go, as they say in the show, go. also something you got to get used to with a lot of this stuff. They're always talking about their dream. I must achieve my dream. They're going to go beyond, you know, you better uh, give me everything you've got or you better bring everything you've got. And they they say, go above, go beyond plus ultra. So, um, you know, they're constantly, like, but the, there's several moments where characters like are to, in my mind. Also, it's like a combination of the music and the way that they combine everything. Or I'm like, Oh my God, he's a hero. Oh, uh, Izuka Midoriya really is a hero. You know, it's just like really crazy stuff. So yeah. <clears throat> anyway, I'm blown away with how much this show has touched you. Uh, it's, it's great, man. It's, it's, it's really, right. really good. It is a little bit horny. I will say that too, where I'm like, there's a character in it that I would love nothing more than to uh, uh, push his head into the water until the last bubble goes bloop. Um, he's super annoying and he's super pervy. And I'm like, can this character just get his throat slit or something? Because like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm over it. So, but, um, but he makes you feel something. Yeah. He makes me, he, I hate him. I'm like, how are you in this school? How did you make it in? Because you seem worthless. Um, so I, yeah, <laughs> I would love, uh, back to <clears throat> them announcing their moves. Like it made me think of what, like what, how different the UFC would be if you just, <laughs> If you, just had, if you just had someone like someone just like and uppercut, uppercut, right hook, right hook, left hood. No. Jab, 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 jab. It, it would it would be it would be Shoot. so much so much more dramatic. Like I imagine like wrestling, you're like double leg, take down as I just <laughs> scream as they shoot to take him down. Flying knee, flying knee, fireman carry! We're fire. <laughs> Just all sorts yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Would definitely change the sport. We'll in, say that. In, indeed. Indeed. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. The day you decide to take that plunge, Justin, let me know because I want running commentary as you're exploring this. I really do. Oh, the day. I, I thought you meant the day I decide to become a UFC fighter that, that calls out. Either, either one. You're saying when I start to watch the show. Yes. Understood. Yes. Or if you become an MMA guy, I would like to know. How that goes. You got it. Either way, whatever happens first, I'll let you know. Either way, I'll bruv. You, I'll keep you abreast of a situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. give me a breast. <clears throat> Is it time? Would you want to tell people where they can find us and shit? Oh, shit. <clears throat> oh, shit. Do you guys know? <laughs> Do you know where you can find us? Well, if you don't, you can follow us on YouTube, youtube.com slash podcast. Post all of our episodes there, as well as highlights and shorts, video game streams, all that jazz. Uh, you can follow us on all social medias at Get Podcast, And you can check the link in the description down below for links to our Discord, to our Patreon, and to our, uh, to our uh, merch. You can do all of that. And we'd, uh, if you're here too, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It mean the world to us. And thank you for all your support. You're great. We love you. You are. Kiss we love you so much. That hit, All right, that hit, I, I, my my finger slipped a little quick on that one. Uh, it's too late. We're going again. for it. All right. How many times have you gone and make yourself a tuna salad sandwich only to crap go crap open a can of tuna and find that it's gone bad? If you're like me, it's almost every time. That's because tuna shouldn't come in fucking cans. It's not what God intended. <laughs> well, say hello to tuna time. You're fresh. Tuna Solution. Tuna Time is a monthly subscription, of course it is, where we ship you a live 50-pound yellow fin every week. You'll know it's fresh by the amount of fight it gives you. And as a special introductory offer, if you sign up before the end of the month, we, we'll include the Tuna Time Tuner 3000 with your first shipment. This patented device, which, has, which was narrowly Nearly approved by the FDA, takes up less space than a refrigerator and handles your tuna prep needs. Simply dump your elephant out of its tank, give it a whack with a shovel, load it into the metal rack, close the door, hit the start button, and watch as the Tuna Time Tuner 3000 pressure cooks, skins, debones, shreds, and seasons your fish. Perfection every time. Go to tunatimesubscription.com and enter MindGap at checkout to get $10 off your first three months. If it's time for tuna, it's got to be tuna time!
<laughs> fucking love those guys, man. Tuna time all day. It's fucking tasty, man. You will never run out of tuna. I, I agree with you, man. There's a lot of things that shouldn't come in a can. Tuna is one of them. Chicken <clears throat> absolutely. is another one. Yep. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you get a lot of chicken in a can? Uh, no, I've seen it. And it's probably one of the worst <laughs> things I've ever seen is someone just like, <laughs> as it slides out of the can, maintaining the shape of the can, you're like, Ugh. Yeah. Like no. spam in a can. Yeah, Have just... you had spam? You know, I haven't. And I hear it gets more hate than it deserves. I've heard the same thing. I'm very curious, but I just cannot bring myself to buy a can of spam. I think it it's all depends on how you prep it. If you just obviously were to take it out of the can, cut yourself a slice no, 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 and no, eat no, it. No, and no. I'm sure yeah. some people do that. And they're like, trust me, it's mm-hmm. good. But I've heard some, I've seen people prep, you know, make meals out of it. Um, and they, they're like, this is some shit right here. You'll, you should like it. And I'm like, all right. I mean, I'm sure it's like bologna, you know, it can't. It can't be any worse for you than bologna. Uh, you know what? The ever the You're everything right. meat. Right. I'm sure yeah. it can't. It can't be. Do you like chicken lips? Well, get bologna. <laughs> get, get bologna, loser. Loser. <laughs> Doug, okay. I got another question for you. Yeah. Why does Joe Rogan, why does he keep being the worst? This is this this hurts because uh, mm-hmm. I, I used to be a big fan of of the Joe Rogan experience podcast. Um, I listened to it on the regular. Um, I really enjoyed the comedians he had. In fact, I found Tom Segura because of him, because right. he was on there. Like most of the comedians I found were because of that podcast. Um, I heard some really interesting stories from some really interesting people on there. But then when he started like having, you know, Alex Jones on there, Ben right. Shapiro, <clears throat> Steven Crowder, Elon Musk, um, Jordan Peterson, like all these guys. And I just, and, it, and I think what irked me was they would say some wild shit. Rogan would say some wild shit. And then he'd be like, I don't, don't listen to me. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm just a comedian. And I'm like, when your audience is as big as yours, right? You can't hide behind that. You can't be like, ah, I'm just, I'm a fucking idiot. Well, you know, I'm, I'm fucking stupid. Don't listen to me. Right. I'm like, People do. And right. people, I mean, he's hands down the most popular podcast out there. I think the numbers speak for themselves. Like, Well, absolutely. I think the the deal that he garnered from Spotify, I think mm-hmm. the uh, the numbers, the, yeah, all of it, yeah. all of it goes to back that statement. And uh, for the record, there's nothing wrong with uh, having people on that different opinion from you. Like yeah. having someone on that challenges your belief system or your audience's belief system is a good thing because you can mm-hmm. have a debate. You can talk things through. You can get, if someone is making wild accusations, what a great way to sit down with them for three fucking hours. Like he does to, to sit down with them and actually like challenge what they're saying. Like they'll, they'll make a claim. It's like, cool. I'm going to challenge you on that. Back that up. Keep backing it up. I'm going to keep pressing you and keep pressing you until, but I feel like that doesn't always happen. No on that podcast. It doesn't. Um, and, I, I, I think Joe is genuinely curious, which is Agreed. why he likes to have these people on and talk to him yes. and things like that. But it's gotten to the point now where like the regular people he has on there. And again, I feel like you have to understand the influence that you have with this sort of stuff. Like, um, you know, this fucking dipshit that he had on. I don't know how long ago he had him on, but uh, this guy, uh, what's his fucking name? Some billionaire. Uh, who basically said that um, uh, nukes aren't real. Yeah. Um, which is just absolutely crazy. Um, and Is it Eddie Bravo? <clears throat> no, Eddie Bravo is a conspiracy. Eddie Bravo, highly accomplished jujitsu oh, okay. guy. Also, conspiracy theorist to no end. Um, Cut. Which also, I'm like, Jesus Christ. Um, uh, it's billionaire investor Mark... And recent. That's it. Yep. And he outlined a conspiracy theory that the U.S. faked nuclear weapons testing. And so his head looks like a nuke. So he he says like what he, he says, yeah, you ever seen nuclear testing footage? And they bring it up and he's like, and so they're watching this as like this, you know, footage from the 50s is going off and you see houses, you know, just being destroyed and everything like that. He's like, so, uh, so what happened to the camera? How is that happening? Yet the camera's totally stable and fine. Oh, and by the way, the film is fine. The radiation didn't cause any damage to the film. And they're like, 
Like that, the, in one shot, there's a house and no car. In the next shot, there's a house with the car. Like what? That's crazy. This looks like this is just a miniature, and they're blo- and it's like, are, are we doing this? Right. We're doing this. We're saying nukes aren't real. The tests aren't real. I mean, am I extrapolating and saying that the? He may, he may be like, well, those tests aren't real, but obviously. Hiroshima and Nagasaki happening, or maybe he's saying that I don't know, but it's propagated a conspiracy theory that nukes aren't real, which is crazy. Right? It's absolutely crazy, and all this stuff can be explained. It has been explained and can be debunked. Uh, AP News does a wonderful debunking of this that explains it. Uh, Reuters did a wonderful fact check that debunks all this sort of stuff. And um, I don't know. I find it frustrating because I'm seeing more and more conspiracies online, like Helen Keller. I don't believe it, meaning that like. Helen Keller, blind, deaf, mute. I don't right. believe that she was able to learn anything. I don't believe she was able to learn to read and write and everything, sorts of stuff like that. I'm like, what? I mean, this is this is well documented stuff. Like, you right. know, I'm not but, against yeah. going back and being mm-hmm. like, hey, I don't think that happened exactly as this white colonial person says it did. You know, like, you know, there are uh, certain things that are that are that bear fact checking, we'll right? Say. Like the Native right. Americans being called Indians because Columbus is like, we're in India, nailed it. Right. You know, like, <laughs> boom. Yeah, I think that yeah, you know, there's definitely things that can be challenged and stuff like that. But um, the 1950s, how pleasant the first Thanksgiving was, right? Yeah, everyone was great. Uh, 1950s <laughs> yeah. were not that long ago. They, mm-hmm. Again, yeah. just a couple people ago. It wasn't. It wasn't that far. It wasn't that far ago. Right. Um, you know, and Helen Keller, not that long ago, um, for people to be like, you know, oh, no, that didn't happen. I'm like, ah, I mean, we have evidence. We have evidence of that. And we can we can say that. And and it's it's super frustrating. Um, and so I just so all that to say, this is a batshit take. It's crazy. Yeah, it's absurd. It's absolutely insane. And, and the fact that now it's starting to. It, but the thing is, like, these kind of things happen and they start to spread. They do. And it gains it gains traction and it gains legitimacy and people are like well maybe you know and look we've do from the moon landing through Mm. you know like this this these kinds of conspiracies have been happening for a very long time and they can like you said they continue to happen like the taylor swift travis kelsey one where Mm -hmm. taylor and travis were their relationship she's a she's a deep state uh operative that was that was dropped into this relationship with kelsey in order to you know uh, uh it's a government psyop that, that, you know, we're going to control you through their music and their social media posts. It's like, what guys, <laughs> what the government happening, create and run an effective healthcare website. Okay. I, right. So I always go back to that. <laughs> like yes. when they're like, which by the way, I'm all for the affordable care act and what that provides people. But when they launched it, that website didn't work. Okay. It was dog shit. It was, it was absolute it was dog absolute shit. Absolute okay. Program was great. The uh, website was dog shit. The, uh, the idea that everything is a psyop, boy, is that exciting. That's super exciting to be like right. Taylor Swift is has been engineered yep. to be a psyop. She's Guys, the government cover. She's a can't, cover agent. The government can't be a bureaucratic, inefficient piece of shit and also a Bond villain. Like it can't be both. <laughs> it just can't. Like it can't. The the the, the ways that it would take, the, the the effort it would take to do this stuff. Is that a cool thing? Absolutely. That's some wild ass shit that you'd probably see in some anime. Like that this popular person yeah. is a actually a psyop person who's part of a plan to, you know, make the spread the left's ideology to the youth so that they'll vote. And, you know, take like, wow, what a cool story. Go write a book. Go tell that story. Go write that that fiction. But the idea that like birds aren't real, you know, like just right. The wild stuff that people are are saying. I'm like, gang, gang, gang. So I want to propose our own conspiracy psyop. So. Here's what I think is a psyop that I hope let's let's, let's spread it. it. Let's be irresponsible with our vast audience and let's <laughs> just ask a question. Carpets. Strange, aren't they? Strange they are pretty much everywhere, you know? Most places have carpet, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, I would say 95% of the United States has carpet somewhere. 
and the and 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 in, 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 indoors, right? You know, mm-hmm. and I think it's strange that the carpets had they smell funny. You know, the, the fresh carpet smells weird, right? You it ever has notice a that? Very unique smell to it. Absolutely, it has a very unique smell to it. Yeah, you know, because do you know why it has a unique smell? Why is that? It's because obviously the carpet has been soaked in synthetic human pheromones as a way to placate the masses for them to focus on spending money to fund the corporate agenda. Checkmate. (laughs) I have never heard a more logical sound argument than that, sir. Because that's corporate America. Well, That's the lobbyists. They're like, you know what we ought to do? We mm-hmm. ought to pass regulations on carpets, you know, because they're behind it. It's big corporations. They're like, we got to do this. What better way to do it? Let's most people have carpets in their homes, right? Mm-hmm. You know who doesn't? You know who doesn't have carpet in their home, Justin? Is Rich people. Oh, Rich people alt, don't. It's tile. All marble. Tile. It's tile. Yeah, exactly. I saw. As far as I can see. A, a home in Kirksville, Missouri. One point eight million dollars. All right, mm-hmm, Justin, mm-hmm, all mm-hmm. tile, all tile in Kirksville, in Kirksville, Missouri, in Kirksville, in Kirksville, Missouri, Missouri, mm. blew my mind too. 10,000 square feet, all tile, Disagree. all Disagree. tile, all tile, Justin, Yeah. no carpet to be found anywhere. And why do you think that is, Doug? Because wealthy people would be living there. They're not the there ones that need to buy. It's nope. the sheep. It's the sheep that need to be out yeah. there buying stuff. That's to right. feed the corporate machine because rich people are there to reinvest their earnings into the stocks, into their assets, and hopefully lobby to get that capital gains tax down so they can pull that money out whenever they want with little penalties. But the average folk go out and spend that money, man. Go wild for Christmas. Go wild for, hey, Memorial Day is coming up. Maybe you ought to go to the movies, buy some popcorn, buy some candy. You know, maybe just stay home. Maybe just stream some things, right? Pay for that subscription. You know, why don't you get on Amazon? What do you need? Stay home. Cozy on that carpet of yours. You know, (laughs) breathe it in. Breathe it in, you fucking sheep. So, Doug, what do we do about this? What steps can the average American take? What can you do to protect Justin? themselves? What can you do? Because people aren't going to listen, Justin. No, they're you not. Know, people need to wake up. They need to wake up and smell what's not their carpet. So, I guess number one, um, you know, take take your money right that you got, triple it, mm-hmm. right? Invest it, triple, triple your assets. Remove the carpet, install tile all throughout your house. The other thing that people can do is they can go to our online shop Mm. and they can buy the uh, mind that we've worked. We have worked diligently with some of the top scientists to formulate this product. You can go and you can buy the mind gap carpet bomb and you can you can eradicate those chemicals that were put there by the lobbyists and by those deep state. That's right. uh, Act uh, act, actors. That's right. right. You could also it. it, We actually uh, have a supplement in our store. That you could take that too. Yes, that supplement go, has that carpet bomb and the and the supplement. They go hand in hand. Supplement will parcel. help. It will. You'll you'll take it. It's going to boost. It's got vitamin B, vitamin yep. E, vitamin, vitamin K, T. vitamin M. A lot of people don't talk about vitamin M, and right. all these things are going to help. It's not going to work overnight, but you got to start mm. building up that resistance so you can fight back. But good news, it's a monthly subscription, and it just comes right to your door. Yeah, absolutely. And also use the code, uh, check out tileandtony.com. He's our he's our affiliate who uh, can put tile in your home too. Use code yeah. MindGap at checkout. Uh, get $100 off tile installation throughout your whole house. Yeah. And they will cool. actually take care of the carpet for you because they are actually licensed and trained to remove the carpet effectively so they also don't get uh, infected exactly. with the pheromone. They've been on a regimen They've been on a regimen of our supplements for a, a long time, so they are they're 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 trained. They've got the equipment. 
They've got the uh, the antibodies. They're ready to go. Their 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 immunity has been built up, and they're ready to help you. That's right. right. Don't sleep on this. Don't sleep on this. This is important. Okay. Yeah. Wake up, America. Justin, you like hockey. It's that easy. <laughs> Where's my transition sound effect? <laughs> well, you're looking for me because uh, I, I I ain't doing it, you know? <laughs> um, uh, you know, I don't dislike hockey, Doug. <clears throat> I kind of like, I don't know, it's there. I've been to a couple minor league games when I was in yeah, Quad City. Been- it was fun. I, yeah, I was gonna say I, I, I've seen the Quad City Mallards play. Yeah, uh, I went to one Hawks game, which was which was a lot of fun. Yeah, um, the thing that I found the most difficult when I was at the Hawks game was uh, following. Following the puck, that fucking thing, <laughs> that fucking thing moves so fast in real life. You don't understand. On screen, I'm like, oh, thank God the camera guy's taking care of where right <laughs> where you're supposed to be looking. That I could not keep up with where the players. Where the players were, it was it was the most bizarre thing, and it was it was it was fascinating to experience that. I, I don't remember the same issue. I might not have been paying as close of attention. I don't remember the same issue in the Quad Cities, but when I saw the Hawks, man, that was that was next level. I was like, "Where is the puck? I cannot find this little black dot that they're shooting around at ninety miles an hour." It was uh, yeah. So look, I got my respect for it. I just don't typically watch it often. You know, the main reason why I went to a couple of the Quad City Mallards games when I was in uh, college was to see the fights, hoping for fights. I was and, at a fight and a hockey game broke out. Uh, yeah. That old um, chestnut. Yeah. And one of them was uh, versus uh, the Rockford, whatever the hell they were, but they were the, the rivals. Ice Hogs? Yes. They were the yeah. rivals of Quad Cities, yep. of the Quad City mm-hmm. Mallards. And there were probably like five fights in that game. It was were there wild. Really? I was like, this is awesome. It was so cool. <laughs> just just constant fights because they hated each other. And it was so cool. Um, but over the weekend, Jill out of nowhere just goes, hey, uh, can we just address hockey for a second? I'm like, I, I mean, I Wait, guess. This I mean, came out of like the, the complete yeah. blue. I, okay. I think she saw a reel or something and she was just like, you know, she's just like, hey, I, you know, why is it? In hockey, you can just take off your gloves and point someone out, and then the two of you can fight each other, punch each other until someone goes down. (laughs) What's that? You just, they throw them off and they point, and then they skate up to each other. And And then they put up their dukes, and they punch each other until until someone falls onto the ice, and then they stop it. They get penalized, meaning they get five minutes or whatever it is, and then the game continues. And she's like, in any other sport, if you just point at someone, put up your dukes, and start punching, you would get thrown out of the game. You'd probably get suspended. You'd get right. fined. If yep. not, just completely, like, just banned absolutely from the, banned yeah. from yeah. that. You know, you see the dugouts clear in baseball and, you know, football. You see <coughs> those people, basketball, those people are out. It's like, no. Yep. It's like hockey. It's like, hey, this is against the rules, but we're going to let you do it. Right, Exactly. Because you see, you see the the refs. They skate up and they skate around them as if to say, "Okay, like everyone, no ahead. one interfere. <laughs> go a ahead, duel. but don't don't go too far." Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's like they're like, "We're gonna just we'll let you throw a couple two three, but you know, the minute the tooth falls out, that's it. That's enough." They're like, "A that's duel enough. has been called. Assume the position. No one interfere. It's a one on one match. Begin." Who is you? Who is your second, sir? Send them in to negotiate prior to the duel commencing. (laughs) We have a contract. It is valid. Let them go. (laughs) Let them fight. And they. It's a great point, though. I think the the most the the closest thing that I can that I can uh, think of is when the when the dugouts clear Mm -hmm. in baseball. Doesn't happen often, but when it happens, it's a big it's a big hullabaloo. You know, the most you'll see in basketball is someone throws a bow at someone and they get maybe in a shoving match. But yeah. people, they're right there, and yeah. that they they shut that shit down. That's the, it doesn't usually go past. If it goes past that point, it makes you know the the top ten on ESPN that night. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, how many hockey Not fights hockey. are, are yeah. making the top ten on the no. uh, ESPN? You know, only list. the epic ones where they take their skates off and they start stabbing at each right. other. Right when blood yeah. is you know is is out there. 
So, um, but it's I, a great point. Like, yeah. So I'm curious, like, like where do you land on that? Yeah. What do you think? You know, I think I'll say this. I don't know the whole like history of why not why they because I did not jump on Wikipedia and research it. She didn't frankly. read a book, is what it sounds like. To me. I didn't read a book. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize to you. I apologize to our guest from a few weeks ago. <laughs> I don't read books. Um, no, I like I don't without knowing the full history of why that's allowed. I would say that I do think it's it's unnecessary. Do I think it's fun? A hundred percent. Yeah. Do I want it to go away? Not really. Yeah. Like I think that it is a fun part. Any hockey game that I've ever caught, it is one of the most entertaining parts of it. And if everyone's in agreement with it, okay. Like yeah. as as long as someone's just like <laughs> not like, well, I don't want to fight. Don't hit me. And then they just get pummeled. Like I'd feel bad about that. But as long as everyone's like, yeah, we're doing this. Cool. Fucking let it go, man. <laughs> So I think I heard this, like, Bill Burr loves hockey amongst other sports. Sure. And I think I remember him giving an explanation for this, which I was like, it kind of makes sense. In hockey, if someone starts talking trash, being a dick, mm-hmm. doing things they're not supposed to, the goon comes out. <laughs> you said, yeah, there's there's that player that is known as the goon. The goon the isn't necessarily good at the game. <laughs> right. But they're out there to basically fucking pick fights and police. Right. And so if someone's being shitty, right, being a real dick, the goon comes out and the yeah. goon retaliates. And eventually there's order, you know, like punches are thrown, you know, like ruling. It's like established that like, hey, you don't fuck around. All right. You don't get right. to do that and get away with it because the goon's out here right now. And it's it's not intent to like do serious harm, but it's like, hey, you're out of line. Come over here. Come over here. Right. Like uh, we need to we need to sort this out. They go. This at is it. your first warning. <laughs> Sorting out is done, and then they move on. And what I like about that, to some extent, is like the way Bill Burr put it is like you know in other sports, you have guys that are like talking shit nonstop, mm-hmm. and there's no repercussions for it. You know what right. I mean? They'll they judge can beat dicks. All, yeah. They can do stuff that people are like, hey, what the fuck are the you doing? Game. And they're just like jawing. Nothing happens. Uh, you know, imagine if like in basketball, someone's talking all that shit. Someone goes, all right. They take off their headband and they're like, let's go. And they're like, center court, baby. Let's go for the tip off. And they just start like <laughs> going to town on each other. First person hit the court. They're like, I'm done. You know, and they walk away like, right. you know. Things they go sit uh, on the bench for five minutes and then they get listen, to come back in. Super barbaric. I get it. Sure. Right. But um, <clears throat> it establishes like the norm of like, hey, you can't do that. It's not right. cool. You know? <laughs> well, I, the, I guess the other thing I would say is that it's <laughs> if it's part of the I don't think it's an issue if it's if it is if it's part of the the history of the game. Right. Like no one would ever say like, you know, I think too many fights break out in the UFC. <laughs> you know, like it's just that's it was established Obviously. as that was that's part that is what it does in hockey. This is this is part of the DNA of hockey. Everyone yeah. who watches hockey, who likes it, who lo- they understand this comes with the territory. Anyone who plays it is like, yeah, I might get my clock, my bell rung a few times. You know, yeah. like that's what it is. And so, as long as everyone is in agreement and it's like it's part of what it like. I don't know. I don't see. A, I don't necessarily see a problem with it. Now, I'm assuming that Jill. Wants to eradicate it. She doesn't see the point in it. Um, right. I apologize. Jill's not here to defend herself, but uh, her, that's her, fine. Her, yeah, it's cool. Uh, her thing is just like to her, it doesn't make sense why right. this. It's obviously there's a penalty for doing it, right? It's not. I, I get from the practical right. side. I get that. Practical right. Doug cannot disagree with that. Hey, this is a violation of the rules of right. the game. You stop the game to fucking fight each other. That's not okay. You get a and timeout. Refs, you, know? you let them do it, but yeah. then penalize them for and doing like, it. But you, you let get them a do timeout. It. Yeah. You get a timeout. Sit down. You know, it's like okay. Also, good job. <laughs> also, no other financial penalties. You'll be back in in five minutes. You know, like it's just, you know, it's 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 hey, one hey, of those hey, things. Hey, hey. Yeah, calm down. Ah, ah, that's enough out of you, buddy. <laughs> um, you know, because you look at everything else, any other sport. <laughs> You know, yeah. where obviously where fighting is not involved, um, yeah. you know, it's extremely frowned upon to do something like that. So it is strange that that is in the DNA <laughs> of the sport. But I like the idea of, especially in this day and age with the Internet, when anyone mm-hmm. from anywhere can talk shit and not have to back it up. Yeah. There's something very refreshing about, you know, if someone's out of line, someone goes, yeah, hey, come over here a second. 
I think we need to fucking iron this out. And right. I don't, I'm not a macho guy. I hate machismo. I hate bravado, but something about like, you're out of line, buddy. Come over here. Yeah. I want to, I want to, I want to, let's, I, there's I something need to old school about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like let's like there's something. Yeah. You're like, you're in a bar. You're like, let's step outside, you know, or you have a disagreement with your friend, mm-hmm. you know, one of you hits the other and it's like, I had that coming. All right. We're good. We're good. All right. And well, cause, cause I, like I don't like good. resorting to violence. I think, I think that's, that's, yeah. uh, you're leaning into your emotions to do that, but there's also something about um, there's something primal about the idea of being like, okay, um, I just got roughed up. I maybe maybe I need to reevaluate. <laughs> right. right. Well, you see it. You see it in animals. Like yeah. I can see it in in. I have two dogs. Mm-hmm. I can see it when one of them gets out of line. Like they're playing. One steps over the line mm-hmm. and the other one's response changes. Yeah. It goes from, and you can tell, like, they're both very vocal. So it sounds like they're growling or snarling at each other. You can tell the difference between, like, oh, that's the the playful. Ah, ah, yeah. And then you hear that. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you hear that, like, and you're like, oh, someone like, just stepped over the line. Like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And usually it resets. Yeah. And that doesn't happen again. Like, they kind of, <laughs> one goes to the corner and the other, like. Yeah. <laughs> so, like. It's just it's a very uh, it's a very um, base level. Uh, hey, check yourself, reevaluate. Mm-hmm. Let's yeah. keep going. You know, like, yeah. it's, there's something very primal, very basic about it. Yeah, there's something about that that I find satisfying. Um, you know, <coughs> in this digital world, yeah, where anyone can hide behind anything and just be like, "Hey, <laughs> you suck," <laughs> <laughs> and then they go on with their day, and it's like, "Yeah, hey, come over here, come here." Come here a second. We need to talk. Rusty, come here a second. I want to talk to you, you know? Rusty? <laughs> yeah, that was his name? I think so. <laughs> I okay, hope you called the right guy out. I don't know. Whatever. I think his name was Rusty. I think I think they should uh I think they should in, uh, change the rules of golf personally. Hey, I'm all ears. Tell me more. <laughs> uh, so I think golf needs to and it's I don't think fisticuffs, but I think golf needs to adopt some fencing rules. And oh. so, you know what I'm saying, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you're like, if you're rushing someone, if you're, if you're coming up on them and they're not, you know, you're, you're rushing them through the hole or something. If someone takes to offense, some, something that you've done, someone takes offense to it. You can challenge them. You say, meet me on the green. And you guys go to the green and you've got, it's, it's kind of like, it's like sumo wrestling meets fencing. You've got the green as your parameter. You cannot step onto the rough or you're disqualified, right? You lose the fight. Nice. You take your uh, you take your putters, right? Mm-hmm. You just you start going at it, and the first one to either land a blow across the head or to step out of the like you know, and that that's how it that's how it's done. I think uh, I'd like to uh, implement some form of tag in golf, whether with a ball, some form of tag. Yeah, so like All if right. you're really holding up the line or whatever, I don't know how golf goes, but like if you're whatever, if someone can come up and be like tag, it's like that's some sort of penalty. Like you have to stop where you are. Yeah. And you have to wait five minutes until and the next I person moves that. past you. And uh, if you get tagged with a ball, right, someone just goes whoosh, four. And you don't pay attention. Whap hits you. That's that's like you're out 15 minutes. You got to stay where you are 15 minutes. You know, other we, people get okay, to move so past you. Combine that then. Like instead of instead of tag, that's how you initiate the combat. And then whoever loses, whoever wins gets to go ahead. So if the person who is playing nice. slow wins they get to continue with the pace that they're doing and everyone else has to deal with it but if the person who challenged wins then they get to hop in front and then they can play at their own pace i like that i i, I think it should be something if like you get tagged that Let's person can be like you know what you're right i am slow i concede my Go bad ahead. right if they're like challenge accepted then it escalates from there <laughs> we are making the game of golf better you're welcome you're welcome world you're welcome golf <laughs> We're getting this. We're getting this thing. We're getting this pastime closer and closer to a sport. It's closer and closer. Right? It's getting way every, more interesting every time. We, every time we, we talk, talk about, about it. it. Yeah. <laughs> we had assless chaps, you know, for their attire or just nips right. showing. You know, I like, forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. I'll never forget it. So, yeah. <laughs> check it out. Check. Check it out. All right, it's game time. Oh boy, I'm excited for this one. I am too. Justin, what are we doing? All right, so we are doing. If you've ever, if you've ever been uh, a new hire at a job, <laughs> I was going to say, if you've ever been in corporate you've, America for an icebreaker, you've, you've done this. Yeah. 
So this is two truths and a lie, uh, but it's two truths and a lie, best friend edition. So it's yeah. much harder, right? Yeah. So Doug and I have known each other for, I mean, uh, we're over 10 years now, easily at this point. Yeah. yeah. So Doug and I <laughs> hang out a lot, talk all the time, do a weekly podcast together, known each other for well over a decade. So it's very hard for us to not know something about the other person. We've heard many stories about each other's lives. So yep. this is this is uh, two truths and a lie on steroids. We really mm. had to step it up on this one. So we're going to go through. I have uh, written out two true facts about myself and one lie. Doug has done the same. One of us will read all three, and the other person has to go, okay, here's the here's what I think is the lie, and the other two are the truth. And so we're going to see how this goes. Uh, I'm very excited for this. Doug, uh, do you uh, – What do you? Uh, let's say you won the coin toss. Do you want to go first or do you want to defer? I'm going to defer. Okay. You always defer. That's the rule. All I don't right. know why, but all you right. defer. <laughs> okay. All right. So my two truths and my one lie, all right? Okay. In no particular order. Allegedly. <clears throat> All right. I did a swing dance routine in a high school talent show while wearing a black button-up shirt with flames and Guy Ferrari sunglasses. It sounds very true. Our high school rock band, Kingston Mines, were awarded Keys to the City after winning a Battle of the Bands competition at the Hoffman Estates Annual Summer Festival. I know you did some sort of stuff with a band. I don't know if you won, though. All right. I was roasted by fellow participants of the Chicago Triathlon for not wearing a wetsuit during the swim portion of the race. It sounds like an episode of Scrubs when JD does the, <laughs> does the triathlon. They're it like, does. where's yeah, your think- wetsuit? And he's like, what? He's just wearing like <laughs> briefs. <laughs> oh. This is good. This is really good. I had to dig on this one. I was like, what stories have I not told Doug? Did you do a triathlon? Did I? I did two marathons. A what? Don't. No, not today, <laughs> Justin. Not today. <laughs> We're not doing this. All right. So uh, I feel like the swing dance one is true. Um, okay. What makes you feel like that one's true? Um, because you did gymnastics. So I feel like you're <laughs> agile on your feet. And um, uh, you know. I hope if we can, can we please... Show that picture. If we, <laughs> show it again for in anyone. The edit, in the edit of the show. We can't do it while we're recording, but please edit that in. Oh, just <laughs> um, <laughs> I, th- I feel like, um, I don't know. See, now I'm in my head on, this is what, this is what makes this stuff fun. Cause now I'm in my yep. head on everything. Cause like, I know you were in a band. Um, you said your band name was Kingston Mines. Kingston Mines. M-I-N-D-S. Not Kingston Mines, like the club. Oh, that's Chicago. why I was like, mm, Kingston that, sounds Mines like a, is, that sounds like a club. Um, it's, a, it's a state of mind. Battle of the bands, and you won the keys to the city. huh? Yep, See, all these have just enough like where you're like, mm, I don't know, man. That detail the, seems a bit far-fetched. Yeah. Um, At the Hoffman Estates Annual Summer Festival. Because um, also like the triathlon, if you did do one, um, I feel like you would be prepared for it i feel like you would know what to have you are pretty prepared for that sort of stuff like you don't mess around um so if you did do that you you would know if anything beth would be like justin i think you're supposed to have a wetsuit for this portion of i think she would really help you with that you know so and there's no way you did a triathlon before you met beth just absolutely no way Beth inspires the best out of you. So there's no way you would have done that before you met her. So that, that is a very good, uh, like connection to make because that, that's, that, that is a true, uh, assessment. <laughs> no way I would have done one. No way. No way. No way. You're like, just living with Milos and Bob being like, guys, <laughs> I smoked a bunch of weed allegedly. And now Who's- let's run. I'm going to do a triathlon. I just showed I up. I my idea guys. <laughs> Shut up my swim trunks and everyone made fun of me, you know? I didn't even have swim trunks, man. I just had like boxer briefs. Yeah, it was cold, man. Whoa. I almost got hypothermia, man. <laughs> um, they pulled all the way inside me. I'm I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna say that the the triathlon's uh, the lie. That's the one I'm gonna you, say. Triathlon's a lie? Yeah. Uh Doug. It made sense to me. 
So I'll give you the, the quick backstory on each of these. So I did do a triathlon in 2009. Beth and I were uh, dating at the time. We were engaged. Uh, but okay. um, she did not uh, inform me that I needed a wetsuit. <laughs> I, so I had I had tri, there's uh, tri shorts, right? So they are water. So you can wear yeah. them and swim in them, but they also, they, they kind of wicking quick dry and they have a cushion in the seat area for when you're biking. So gotcha. specific shorts. for. So I was like, cool, tri shorts. Like that's what I need. And it was like, I think it was like August or something. So I'm like, mm -hmm. it's August. It's, it'll be hot out fucking done. Boy, was I wrong. Yeah. So we were walking and, and this is, this is long before again, the marathon. So hadn't lost any of the weight. So chubby me is walking, just <laughs> coming out of this, like, a, like, <laughs> do you have like a picture a, of that, that I could put in the podcast? Like a crescent roll, like just <laughs> coming out of the can. Uh, I wish to God I did. And I got these tight tray shirts on and I'm walking and I'm walking to the, the starting corral in a triathlon, the first leg is the swim. And so we're walking to this set of floating stairs that were put up in Lake Michigan. And you walk down, get in the water and hang out mm -hmm. there. Walk in there with everyone else. And I'm looking around and everyone's got wetsuits on. I'm like, hmm. Isn't this that is... one of the worst feelings when you're like, everyone's uh -oh. got a wetsuit on. Yeah. You're like I fucked so, up somewhere. <laughs> yep. So this guy, this guy walks up next to me, looks over, sees me looking at him. He looks down. He just goes, is this your first try? First time. <laughs> first time. <laughs> and I go, yeah. He goes, Okay, good luck. And I was like, wait, what? And then someone else, he kind of like nudged someone. They look at they're like, first time. And I'm like, oh, come on, let's not make this a whole thing. And uh, yeah, Linus to say, I got in the water and I I didn't know if I was going to be able to swim. My, like, I, it was so cold, all my, my entire body like seized up. Yeah. And I was like, I might drown. I can't move my limbs. And it was, it was horrendous. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, anyway, that was that. Uh, I did do a swing dance in high school. I think I do have a picture of that. I will send it to you if you want to put it in the show. Nice. And then uh, the lie was our high school rock band. We did win the Hoffman Estates Summerfest. We did not. We're not handed the keys. to. The I was city. like, that part that's, sounded, that's sounded a bit yeah. extreme, you we, know, to me. Big, yeah. But I was like, yeah, I totally. I was right about the swing dancing. I knew we, it. I will say this is that we went. We were the last ones on. Uh, uh -huh. We did uh, a little bit of a brag. We were really fucking good for a high school rock band. I, yeah. I will say uh, the they were like, we have extra time. So we just started playing Led Zeppelin covers and just like improvising and rocking. The stage hand at the end came over, dropped his beer and shook all of our hands. Oh, and wow. I was like, to me, that's better than winning the, the winning the thing or the keys to say, what I'm like, have we made a stage hand, like drop his beer and be like, dude, you guys are fucking good. That was all I needed at, at, at 18 years old. I was like, done. That's it. 100%. I can retire my musical career. So that's awesome. There you go. Good for you, man. Hit it up, good. Dougie. All right, here we go. Um, I had bubble gut during a capture the flag match in college and shit on the quad. <laughs> I want that to be true so bad. I have peed sitting down since 2008. I am undefeated in one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one matchups with Jill in the board game categories. Ooh. Ooh, these are good. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. So let's break these down. Break it down. <clears throat> Should it, so uh, on the quad, it was flag football or what was it? Ca I had bubble gut, bubble gut during a capture the flag match in college and shit on the quad. <sighs> capture the flag match in college and you shit on the quad. Mm -hmm. So I know. <laughs> Here's the thing. You, your health level at that point was better than when I met you. Cause you were track and field, like you were, you were still doing, you were, you were into it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I know your health level was, was good. I know your, uh, your intake was God awful. Like you were still, that was, that was Prove 17 it. year old, 17 year old Doug lasted through mid thirties. Right. So I know, I know that that's a very real possibility that, <laughs> that you put yourself into that position at that point in time, regardless of how healthy you were. Um, <laughs> <laughs> categories with Jill. I know you really like to play board games. You guys are a board game family. Mm -hmm. And I know you pride yourself on being really good at a lot of them. Mm -hmm. What is category? I got, what is categories again? How do you? Basically you are given a letter at random and you have yeah. like a minute and you have like a card with like 12 categories and you have to find a, a word that starts with that letter for each of those categories. 
I feel like Jill is really good. She reads a lot and I feel like she's really good at words. Like I, she's really good at words. <laughs> she's really good. She reads, she's, she's looked at a lot of words on paper she together knows lots of words in strings, long words, short words, called sentences, middle um, words, four letter <laughs> words. I don't know. I just, I feel like she's really good. And what was the middle one again? It was, I have peed sitting down since 2008. I feel like that one is a hundred percent, uh, true. Uh, because I, I pee sitting down in the morning a hundred percent of the time, uh, throughout the day, it's a crapshoot depending on, you know, how I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, but I understand the draw to that. And I do think that is 100% true. And anyone who says, uh, anything ill against that can go fuck themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, so the shitting on the quad thing has me, I want it to be true so bad. And I feel like it's just, it's just big enough. To where it it could be true. Uh, I'm going to say the categories thing is the lie. You are correct. Whoa! All right. I have never beaten Jill in categories, Not once. Oh, you've be- never beaten the her? The best I've ever done is tied her one time. Wow. Okay. She's, she wipes the floor with me in that game every single time. Absolutely. Because she knows me. words good. Yeah. She she absolutely destroys me. Uh, I was freshman year of college. Oh, tell me it was about this sibling weekend, and it was like oh. a nighttime capture the flag <laughs> game. Better, and I was doing my best, running around, and my stomach was just. I was like, oh god, and I was in a position where I'm like, the closest place to go was like the student union, and it was probably closed, and I couldn't I couldn't make it, so I just in the dark tiptoed to a somewhat secluded area and just right in the middle of the ground, just shit. And I so grabbed, you didn't even make it to like a bush or something. Nope. Nope. <laughs> and this was at night. Thank God. I grabbed some leaves, tried to wipe my ass. They was dry in the fall. They crumbled. And I, I remember I went over and I just was like sitting on some stone stairs. I was just like, uh, uh, and someone comes up and goes like right up to my shoulder. Like, Hey man, you know where the flag is? Wow, it really smells like shit up here. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah? Someone else comes and goes, hey guys, you're where the flag is? Whoa, it smells like shit over here. <laughs> and I go, yeah, I think there's like a sewer line over there. Let's go this way. And it was just like, got to run away. <laughs> and I got I got back to the dorm. My underwear was just covered in shit. Like I had to throw them away. <laughs> like it was, it was awful. I felt miserable. I was like, this sucks, man. This sucks. This is no good. So, true story. Uh- <laughs> Um, what can I ask? Do you remember? Did was it something that you ate? That, it was everything that I ate. I ate this? like garbage all the time. Right? Like, like <laughs> who knows? It, it, take your pick. I was my freshman year. I was probably eating ramen. Oh, uh, who knows? Man. Just like a whole bunch of just gross. Was carbs. Dave there? It was siblings weekend? No, no, no one came okay. for me for siblings right. weekend. <laughs> but uh, oh yeah. my god! And That's I have funny. been peeing since sitting down since two thousand eight. Actually, Jill was the one that gave me the the idea for this. She goes. Because she actually remembered this, I didn't. She goes, you've been ping sitting down since like 2008. I go, what? She goes, you don't remember why? I go, why? She goes, you started doing this at the hotel because that was your only time to sit down during your shift. You would go and take long oh. bathroom breaks and just sit and like sit down at the urine, at, at, at the, at the, <laughs> sit down on the urinal and uh, <laughs> just backed it right in and just, and just, and that's what I would do. I would take extended bathroom breaks just so I could sit down and rest my feet. That makes and then sense. I just I just kept doing it from there on out, and I was just like, I sense. like sitting down is way better. Yes. way way better. Mid- middle of the night, I do not mm. want to turn on any lights. No, fuck that. And so that's the easiest, that's the safest way to make sure yeah. that you hit it. 100% also, of I am the time. I'm an I'm one male in a house of two females, so it's like out of respect for them, you know. I'm I'm you know I'm part I'm part of the team, you know. Look at you sit go. Down with them. Look at you so, go. Yes, so. Well done, Justin. Ooh, well done. Man, my cheeks hurt. That was that's funny. Yeah, that was fun. That was really, really good. So Yeah. Ooh, right. ah, uh Justin, what do you got to recommend this week? Uh so I'm gonna recommend <clears throat> the movie Argyle. Um it is Matt, uh, uh, no, uh not Matt Damon. No, wait, Argyle. Why do I know this? I'm thinking uh never mind. I'm gonna stop you got talking. It. Get you get there. Nope. Uh directed by Matthew Vaughn. It's got Bryce Dallas Howard, Henry Cavill, Sam Rockwell, John Cena, Dua Lipa. Uh, Ariana DeBow, Brian Cranston, just fucking name it, Catherine, um, uh, Jesus, I'm like, Catherine O'Hara. Um, 
so yeah, so Bryce Dallas Howard plays a author who writes a successful spy series um, <clears throat> called Argyle. And it turns out that uh, everything she's writing has been happening in the world of the spies. And so she's visited by a spy. This is in the trailer. Sam Rockwell meets her on the train and is like, hey, you need to come with me uh, to meet the real agent Argyle and uh, write your next chapter because we need to know how this is going to end, how this current thing that's happening is going to end. And she's whisked into a world that just makes everything topsy-turvy for her. And it is, I'll say this, it's a fucking fun movie. Like, is it is it going to be one of those movies where you walk, like Schindler's List, where you're like, that hit me really hard? No. But are you going to walk out going, that was a fucking load of fun and really, really unique? Absolutely. Um, Sounds like that movie that had Will Ferrell in it, where I forget the name oh, of it. But he was just like an average stranger guy. than fiction. That's the one, yeah, where he was actually where he he hears the characters that he's writing and yeah, ex- or he's or he's, he's the he's, character. He's the character, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That this woman wrote about yeah. Um, there's a twist in this uh, that differentiates it from that. I'll say good. Um, but uh, it is so. Matthew Vaughn did the Kingsman. Mm-hmm. This has been confirmed that and this is the only thing where I was like, this could go one of two ways. It's within the Kingsman universe mm. and there's going to be allegedly more Argyles and tie-ins with the Kingsman. So mm. there's going to be a whole thing, right? So, but I will <laughs> say <laughs> that Argyle at least by itself was a very fun movie. So go nice. check it out. Uh, I do believe it is streaming. Where is it right now? Apple TV. Uh, it's on there and uh, I'm sure rentable elsewhere. So, Doug, way, what do you got? The movie I was yep. thinking of was Argo. Starring, ah, yes. Yeah, uh, ben Affleck. And, ben Affleck yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, yeah. Um, I'm going to recommend Blue Eye Samurai, which is on All Netflix right. right now. It's an eight episode anime series, um, and it's fucking phenomenal. Uh, it's basically a story of revenge. It takes place in 16... 16- 33 in Japan, when Japan has basically closed down its borders, no one but Japanese people are allowed within the borders. And there's a character, the main character, Mizu, who is half Japanese, half white. And she's considered a demon. She's considered an outcast from society. And she goes on a journey of revenge to find her father and kill him. And it is fucking awesome. It's violent. Uh, and it's really fucking cool. So you had me a journey it. of revenge and violent. Yeah, it's fucking yeah. awesome. Really well done. Tells a great story in a really creative way. Nice. Um, I love it. It's really, really well done. So heard good things about it. Can confirm it's awesome. So and it's on it. Netflix, Netflix. Said, or yes. okay, cool. <clears throat> Go check it out. Taking a little A24 break, are we? Yeah, uh, I saw Zone of Interest was on, you know, whatever on, on Max and also the movie Men. And I was like. I'm going to watch Starship Troopers. Like I just, I, you know, I'm like, no. which by the I way, need a break. Starship Troopers. Holy shit. When I, I went to the movie theater to see that when it came yeah. out, the whole premise of this, like it, it, it didn't get it. I did not get it. And it's a common it's so- thing that people don't get nowadays. Yeah. And um, I was listening to the dialogue, like at the beginning of the movie. And I was like, oh, I mean. I completely miss this. Like there's a part where the main character's in school and they're talking about how democracy failed and how mm-hmm. basically <laughs> the fascist violent way is the only way to be successful. And I was like, whoa, okay. I missed this when I was younger by a long shot. I was like, oh, yeah. okay. It's, this is hilarious. You know, It's so funny. I just saw a YouTube video where someone broke down like how people missed like that. This is a satirical commentary on Blah, 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 blah. like all like it's yes. just like it, it came off as this like oh that's that campy shitty movie and it's like no there's actually a lot of progressive uh like a lot of commentary about like the, the bad yeah. guys are the heroes in the movie <laughs> right right yes yeah yeah i mean it's literally cool. propaganda throughout the I film you know yeah, it's, i haven't seen it in a long time but i want to go back and watch it yeah. after seeing that so i yeah i had fun watching it again i was like I oh this it. is great this is so much fun uh Speaking cool. of fun, thank you all for hanging out with us. We appreciate you as always. Please follow us on all our social media at MindGap Podcast. If you're here, youtube.com slash MindGap Podcast. Please hit the like button, subscribe, leave us a comment. Let us know. Uh, conspiracy theories. What should we make up next for that? You know, what's what's cool about that? Um, and, um, you know, uh, what do you think about hockey? Are you a hockey fan? Are you a hockey expert? Tell us about fighting. Should it stay? Should it go? Should other sports adopt it? Uh, and tell us two truths and a lie. We'll get, we'll guarantee we'll get it right. 
So all that good stuff. Uh, check the link in the description for links to our Discord. Be part of our community, uh, Patreon, and Redbubble merch. And follow Justin as well. On Instagram, at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. While you're in the online realm, anywhere where you can find and consume podcasts, you can find and consume us. Like, share, uh, subscribe, rate, review, all those things. And then sharing is the big one, like we always say. Please let people know that we exist. It means a lot. Uh, to Tweestaith on all social media. Love and improv film.com. Love and improv film on Instagram. Awesome. Well, with that, I'll say, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Viewers and listeners, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.